Hi, everybody. My name's Sue Supriano, and my guest today is David Chandler. David Chandler is a high school teacher of physics in a small town in California, and we are here in Portland, where I now live, and David Chandler is here for a conference of high school and college physics teachers. He is a member of Architects and Engineers for 9-11 Truth. He is an independent researcher and has discovered some really important things that shed some light on the story of what happened on September 11, 2001. This is a very important, controversial matter, and there are many, many people actually who are questioning the official story. Many, many, and uh, there's just a lot of people just in architects and engineers for 9-11 Truth in that one organization. I want to welcome you, David Chandler, and ask how you got into studying this matter in such depth. Okay. Some of the early videos I saw of the building collapses on 9-11, as I started looking at them in more detail, I became more and more suspicious because these did not look to me like buildings just collapsing or falling down, like building like structural failures or something. When there's a structural failure, it's going to typically be very asymmetrical. It'll be tipping over, you know, parts of it would fall and then other parts would fall and so forth. But here you have the whole thing coming straight down, just right through itself. And so just the appearance of it in the first place. The whole thing being three buildings, one building? Well, I was talking about one I was looking at, but this, yeah, there were three buildings that uh, we basically are concerned about here. The two towers, the North Tower and the South Tower. And then there's a third building that I have found that even years after the event, uh, many very educated, otherwise informed, uh, concerned kinds of people just didn't even know about it. It was Building 7, part of the World Trade Center complex, but it was across the street from the North Tower. And if you follow these kinds of things on the Internet, there's a lot of conversation about it because it was actually the most anomalous of any of the collapses. But it was uh, played down in the mainstream media. There are a lot of videos of this third building coming down on the first day. But after that, they pretty much just didn't show it. Mm -hmm. So unless you're out there really studying what happened on 9-11, you may not even be aware of that. So I interrupted you talking about what you were seeing on TV the day it happened, right? Okay, well, I wasn't looking at this the day it happened. The day it happened, I just pretty much assumed, well, terrorists uh, flew planes into the buildings and so forth, and I didn't really go much further. I was very puzzled why the buildings fell down. There was a NOVA program that came out and basically explained it from an official point of view, and I was just sort of absorbing all of this like everybody else at the time. It was actually my sister, who's not even a scientist at all. She's an English professor because she was interested in this. She attended a conference and brought back some videos and some books and said, you really need to look at this. And so I watched some of the videos. And one of the things I noticed at that point was that if you take one of the towers, the North Tower in particular is the one I was actually looking at, but as it started to come down, it it billowed out so much like a big mushroom. There was things thrown sideways so fast. And you could tell that some of the chunks that were being thrown sideways were very massive chunks of steel. These were not just dust clouds being blown away. So things are being thrown. And in fact, there was a discussion later that some of these were thrown as far as 600 feet. That's like two football fields. And what I did was I just measured right on the screen. I just stopped the video took out a ruler, and I looked up some information about like the width of the building and so forth for comparison. And I estimated just from very simple measurements that uh, some of this material that was being ejected was being thrown horizontally at over 60 miles an hour. I have since then gone back with other measuring tools and found that the the highest speed one I found was like 78 miles per hour for a massive multi-ton probably um, chunk of material. Um, anywhere in the, in the range from, say, 45 to 70-plus miles per hour. This is very odd to see. This doesn't like smoking gun evidence, I wouldn't say. I mean, some people would say that is, but I can imagine scenarios where some things get pushed around 
might get tossed to the side, but this is pretty extreme. And I, in any case, what this did for me in my case was it sucked me in to looking more carefully at what happened. I have a tool that I use in my physics teaching that allows you to take a video and break it down frame by frame. And you can watch something as it moves, and you can put a mark on some object and trace it from one frame to the next. And in a video, the fact that the frame rate is constant, typically about a 30th of a second between frames, and uh, then you also have the pixels on the screen so you can measure things and uh, you can actually come up with velocities and accelerations and so forth. So you can do the analysis right there using the video as a measuring tool. That's one of the things we do with students, but that's something that I applied to the videos that I just downloaded off uh, YouTube. And the thing that I measured that I guess was the most significant early on was looking at Building 7. People talked about the fact that it came down close to free fall. And so I just decided I was going to measure it for myself. Plus, which then nothing hit it. Right. Building 7 was not hit by an airplane. It fell at 520 in the evening, and it seems like everybody knew that it was coming down. And how could that be? Because this is not a, an event with any precedent to it. But they were already putting out the story to justify why this building was going to come down. There's many, many references to that. In fact, some of the news stations reported that it had fallen before it actually did. Like 20 minutes earlier or something, the Building 7 has come down. Well, it didn't come down for another 20 minutes. I want to point out my website that has a lot of these videos that I've produced. My analysis I put into little videos that I've posted on YouTube. But my website is 911speakout.org, and you can see my whole collection there as well as links to other pieces of information elsewhere on the Internet. Okay. Yeah. So you conclude. <laughs> yeah, okay. I lost my train of thought for a second. Yeah, that's okay. Okay, but uh, Building 7. Uh, the thing about it that was interesting is I measured the average rate, like I just uh, used this tool and uh, put dots on the various frames and figured it out. It was coming down close to free fall. But I noticed that if you just focused on the first few seconds, it was coming down even faster. So it was not at a uniform rate. And if you limit yourself to like the first two and a half seconds, once the, the corner of the building started to come down, it was a sudden transition from being completely supported to just dropping. And you could measure the rate of what's called acceleration, how quickly the speed picks up. And it was falling down absolutely at the acceleration of gravity. So if you take a, your car keys and you just let go, that's how fast the building fell. In physics, we don't use speed to designate that kind of motion because, you know, as soon as you let go, it's not moving. It's moving slowly, and it gets going faster and faster and faster as things fall. So acceleration is a measure of how quickly the speed builds up. And so that's called the acceleration. And that's what characterizes gravity. And so the corner of the building accelerated downward absolutely at the acceleration of gravity for well over two seconds. Okay. Now, interestingly, NIST, which is the National Institute of Standards and Technology, which was the official government body which is supposed to be investigating the building collapses, they didn't come out with their report on Building 7 until August of 2008. And when they did come out with this report, one of the things in it was a statement that the Building 7 fell, and they didn't even talk about acceleration. They talked about free fall time. I mean, that's like just taking a stopwatch and saying start and stop, you know. They used two data points when they started the stopwatch and when they turned it off again, and they said it was 40% longer than free fall time. And that is just such a blatant lie. Just looking at it, you can see it would be very close to free fall. But if you actually measure it, it is so close to free fall, it's right on the money. It's indistinguishable from free fall. There's always some kind of measurement error when you're doing science measurements, but uh, it's very tightly confined to being some number very, very close to the actual acceleration of gravity. Well, I challenged them on this. They had a technical briefing. 
And they also had an opportunity to put in written comments. And a bunch of us actually put in written comments. But I was able to ask a question at their technical briefing. And I just asked a very, very simple question, which was, given that so many people had measured this thing coming down, I really wasn't the only one, but uh, that it came within, I was generous, I said within a few percent of the acceleration of gravity. How could they set aside such a publicly visible, easily measurable quantity in their claim that it came down 40% slower? Mm-hmm. And if you watch the video, it's on my on 9-11 Speak Out, and the star of the show is the, the guys at NIST. I mean, they're the director. I mean, Sean Sunder is the director of this whole investigation, and then John Gross is one of the lead engineers, and their responses uh, to my question and another question that was asked by Stephen Jones. I mean, just read their body language. You judge for yourself. These are, are people who are having difficulty lying, covering this stuff up. It is so blatant. Interestingly, I mean, there are a number of topics that people brought up that needed to be addressed. The only one that I'm aware of that was really addressed, you know, this was the draft for public comment in August. They come up with their final report. Pretty much the only thing that I'm aware of that they actually changed, they redid their analysis on freefall. And they actually acknowledged that it came down at freefall. Now, what does that say? All of this talk about free fall might sound sort of esoteric, but it's like this. If you drop a rock, free fall is motion under the influence of gravity and nothing else. If you drop a rock through water, you have the resistance of the water slowing it down, right? Even coming through air, there's a little bit of resistance. And as it gets going faster, that resistance would show up. And then you get what's called terminal velocity, which is as fast as it can plow through the air. But even free fall with no consideration of any resistance whatsoever, that's how fast the building came down. It came down at theoretical free fall like you would get if you drop something in a vacuum with no resistance at all. So it was an amazingly fast collapse. So here's all of this steel, which is capable of supporting the full weight of this building many times over because they have a safety margin. And all of a sudden, it offers zero resistance. That's completely unbelievable. The only way this could happen is you had to have had the vertical columns in this building eliminated uniformly across the entire width of the building. And by the way, it was as long as a football field. It's 100 meters across. Over the entire width of the building, you had to eliminate this support over a distance of approximately eight floors. So about 100 feet of vertical extent. That's how much support had to have been removed instantly within a fraction of a second. Because this roof line came down. It buckled at one point, but essentially it was just level as it came down. So do you want to talk about what you think happened? The interview's already half over, so I'm not sure what to do with the, the science.